I can share a personal experience about how we tweak economic forecasts, how we skew them. Uh, certainly, I knew that's what I was supposed to do. Uh, my bosses at, at my company uh, put a tremendous amount of pressure on me to, to do these things. And this pressure is it's quite easy. I, I, I talk in one of my books about how uh, the person who, my predecessor, was retiring, and he was determined to be integritous and not tweak the forecast. So he was fired, and I was given his job with a clear understanding I knew why he was fired, and I knew that if I wanted to progress in this company, I would tweak the forecast. And when I later hired other people, and I ended up having several dozen very highly skilled economists and, and uh, financial experts working for me, they all knew that their bonuses, their raises, uh, everything dep depended on going along with the system. Now, when we take these forecasts to the World Bank or the Inter-American Development Bank or the Asian Development Bank or any of these other organizations, there are people in that organization that are supposed to catch this if we're being non-integritous, if we're tweaking forecasts, there are specialists there that are supposed to review this. And my experience was that some of these guys really are integritous. They wanted to punch holes in my forecast. And I would often have to stand before a, a board or a committee at the banks and defend my forecast and they would pick holes in them. Some of these people who are quite junior uh, really saw through what I was doing. But I always knew that above those people, their bosses knew exactly what was going on, and they were determined that the country that I was doing this forecast for was going to get that loan, that this was going to move forward. So it was a charade. But sometimes we would spend several months before these committees justifying, arguing, debating, and going back and tweaking some more and writing more reports. And it was, it was, al it was almost like a, a appearing before a court of law, you know. It was like two, two lawyers opposing each other, and, and we'd have our teams and we would set them up. So within the bank itself, there were experts, there were econometricians, e economists who were quite integritous, and they saw through what we were doing, but they never won, ultimately, because their bosses were on my side, although it was never that obvious, but we always won, ultimately. And uh, the other aspect of this is that we usually had a lot more money, so there might be one expert there, maybe two, and I'd have a staff of 30, 40 people who I could draw on, and I'm getting lots of money to develop these forecasts. They're getting very little money to criticize and pick them apart. So. Uh, I could come up with very complex econometric forecasts and, 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 and computerized databases that they didn't even have access to and didn't have the ability or the funds to develop those. So the system was very, very rigged in my favor. But I think a lot of these people uh, there didn't realize this, at, not at, the beginning, at least not at the beginning. I've since, and since this book has come out, I've talked with a lot of people kind of come out of the shadows from these organizations like the World Bank and its sister organizations, and, and they, t they tell me that, that, that they did know what was going on. They do know what's going on, and it's very disgusting to them, and they don't know what to do with it. If you're an economist, you can't get a better job. You know, working for the World Bank or one of the consulting firms that works for them is a wonderful job. It's professionally speaking, you're at the top of, of your profession and you're making a lot of money and you're flying around the world, at least I did, first class and staying in the best hotels and your family's doing well and if you work for the World Bank you're living in the best suburbs of Washington DC and your kids are going to the best schools you're on top of the world so in a way you want to believe that what you're doing is good you want to keep your job and you want to justify it and it's it's easy to do that the system all of it conspires to keep perpetuating itself and to make it easy for the people within it to perpetuate that system, to stay in there and keep up the subterfuge.